The one thing that I've gotten off on him lately is that basically, you know, I study fruit flies. And I suddenly realized that basically we're all fruit flies. <laughs> like, you know, you're born as an egg, and you live in that egg environment, and your parents kind of cut out all the external crap that comes in and protect you and nourish you and clothe you and all that. It's a very nice little egg, and it's comfortable. But at some point, you hatch out and start crawling around and eating stuff on your own. You start reading, you start looking at the tube, you start doing all sorts of things. You hatch out as a maggot. And a maggot, a maggot can now crawl around, it's got two dimensions, and it can ingest food at its will, and it defecates all over the environment, and some other smaller maggots can even eat your defecation and get some nourishment out of it. And, uh, you know, you, you grow as you eat more nourishment, and you molt. You become a second-level maggot. You know, a bigger maggot. It even looks different. And the bigger you get, the more people you can, or more maggots you can crush with your weight. Yeah, I mean, most people in the world are content to stay as first or second level maggots. And they establish their own little area and they, they crawl around there and that's fine. And the, the guys that become 10th level maggots are really big wheels. Uh, do you think that we'll ever understand the genetic code? The chemistry of life, this is in 1961, and I said in all my uh, great erudition, I said, impossible. Maybe in uh, 50 or 60 years we'll know something, but certainly not before then. And that very fall, the first bit of information came in, and within five years, the whole thing was solved. Now, the rapidity with which breakthroughs are made is staggering. And to talk about the world 50 years or 100 years from now is absolutely insane. We can't even conceive of what the world will be like in 50 years. I can barely try to project 10 years from now. And has anyone asked the simple question, what happens when you do that? Now, unless we can set up some body that will stop that before it's too late, I feel 20 years is all we have. We're going to go down the tube. Sockeye salmon are the most prized species of salmon in North America. The biggest sockeye salmon run in the world is in the Fraser River in Canada. Last year, we, we like to have a sockeye salmon run of the order of 20 to 30 million fish in a season. Last year, just over one million sockeye came back, and we really, I really thought that was it, that they're done. The government set up a commission to investigate what the hell happened to sockeye salmon. This year, one year later, we got the biggest run of sockeye salmon in a hundred years. Thirty-five million came back. Nobody has a clue what the hell happened. The imagination of the military is really unbelievable. And they're very far ahead of the general level of scientists, I think. Sometimes I wonder whether scientists like myself who are expressing publicly a lot of concern about various uh, weapons, various dangers that science is bringing about, I wonder whether we're not uh, creating an aura of fear that's out of proportion to the reality of it. <laughs>